Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here from the LGFA, and we're looking ahead to more uh, club activity over the coming weekend. And we're also looking back on the previous uh, weekend just gone. Uh, so my three very special guests today, as I look on the top left-hand side of my screen, is Aoife Burns from Dunamoyne and Monaghan, who are crowned Ulster champions, senior level once again. Uh, so Aoife has kindly joined the call this afternoon. Bottom left-hand side of my screen is Sean Ryan, who was on a couple of weeks ago. Belgium at PRO, and uh, Belgium, of course, got through their preliminary round match in the current account.ie on Ireland series, and they're playing at the weekend once again on Sunday. The visitors from Castle Blaney in Monaghan um, will be making the trip to Maastricht. And uh, also off on her travels this weekend is uh, my third guest, Erin Flanagan, uh, from the Derry Gunley Club in Fermanagh. Uh, Aaron unfortunately laid up with an ACL at the moment, so we'll have a chat about that. Um, but Derry Gonley make the trip to London on Saturday to play Round Towers in the current account. E All Ireland Intermediate Quarter Final. Guys, apologies for the long winded intros. How are we doing? All good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're good. Um, Aaron, I'll start with your good self. Um, you're very good to come on and take the call because I just wanted to get an insight into how you're doing and how the how the recovery is coming along and how far into it are, uh, along that road are you now? Yeah, grand. Um, it's going fine, really. I suppose it um, it's all happened really quickly. Um, I've been very lucky. It happened um, at the end of August, and I think it was in, within a couple of weeks. I had got um, a date for surgery, so that all um, progressed really quickly, which was lucky because I know sometimes you can hear of um, that part of the process drag it on a bit and so that's delaying things um so I was really lucky then and then um, two months just two months over surgery um so yeah it's going grand um surgery went well thank god um rehab's going well as well thank god um so just going through the process it's slow but I suppose patience is key for this thing you just need to stick with it um I suppose we're blessed with the um facilities we have right in our doorstep it's doorstep and they're only um so really lucky in that regard that um we have it right beside us and um the quality of the we have we're getting is brilliant so um just taking my time with it but yeah it's going well okay we wish you well Aaron. i mean how, did it take you long to come to terms with it? because obviously shock sadness disappointment and watching the team progress now how have you yeah. managed to cope with all of that yeah it's tough um i suppose it happened um as I said, at the end of august and with the way the county setup went in for mana this year and um, the club um, club football had been quite delayed so it was actually in the first championship match it happened so I suppose we had kind of the club pairs have put in a lot of work trying to keep the thing ticking over whenever county was um county was going on we were kind of working in the background then for it to happen in the first game at that point you're kind of just raring to go and um can't wait to get a bit of football so then to be taken out of the thing um within the first match was a bit of a shock and I suppose I've never really been injured before so I never really had to come to terms with anything like that um then I think, um, on the other hand, football has been so thick and fast since then. It's nearly been every weekend. So um, in one way, um, it's horrible not being um, on the pitch and that's where ideally I'd love to be. But it's um, a great distraction as well. And I think that I have two months um, done in the rehab already um, is mad. And I think the fact that football is so hectic at the minute and there's so much going on with how well the girls are doing. Um, it's been a bit of a distraction for me as well. So, um, okay. no, on the balance, it's tough. But yeah, the girls have been a great help and great distraction as well with the way they're going. So, okay. are you making the trip at the weekend, Erin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not getting so, yeah, it right. might sound like a silly question, but are you okay to fly with, with, with your leg and that? Yeah, the, the yeah, no, it's there. fine. Yeah, all going the ground. Um, thank God, rehab, um, good movement and everything back in it. So, yeah, rehab's going well. Um, so, no, they're not getting away without me having it. Okay, I know you're very good to come on, and we appreciate it. Um, and I wish you well with with, with, with what lies in store on so many levels. And Aoife Burns, I'll go up to you next in uh, in, in Dunamine, student at DCU. Aoife, so uh, you're taking a bit of a break from the books to talk to us today. I take it. How are you getting on? And you're in second year in in DCU, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and what are you studying there, Aoife? Uh, P in biology teaching. So I have a lot of practical modules more than theory really i have swimming tomorrow so <laughs> okay and if do you mind me asking how you get on how you manage to commute up and down what's the kind of the travel you're doing at the moment up and down to club train and that how are you managing all that yeah so like during kind of the county whole setup of it we wouldn't really be expected nearly to come down for training during the week like we do train over tuesday so i would train up here then on a tuesday with my college and um, but then 
as it gets more serious, like uh, Ulster now, we're into All Ireland, and um, we kind of do make the track down. So my sister plays as well. So I'm lucky that she is the car up here. So she drives down the road and back up. She does all the drive, and I sit in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been on the Monaghan panel now a few years as well, haven't you? Seen your panel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've been on it two years. I think at this stage. Okay. Okay, talk to me about the Ulster final. Um, if I, we were looking in from afar, obviously Ulster had the, had the live stream. Um, you had to take a little detour. You were named probably further forward on the pitch, but you had to take a little detour, maybe fill in as an extra body when, when, when Hazel unfortunately got sent off. Um, if I suppose all the plans that were made pre-match, how did you manage to adapt with 14 players and really you know, show a lot of resilience and, and character to get through that game? Yeah, exactly. Um, but like the help on the sideline is really what got us through. Like as soon as Hazel did get red carded, the instructions were coming in for Man Marie. So you had her shouting like E for you to drop back and all this. Like originally I would have been a back. I've been a back my whole life, basically playing football. And then only when I come up to play with the senior girls where there's a position available, you'll just take it on that team. So I <laughs> soon enough I became a forward then. But um no, so I, I did end up dropping back. But um all the girls we all just help each other out. Like it's kind of like uh, maybe at one stage I stayed back and Sharon got to go forward. So it was kind of just kind of weighing off and helping out all the rest of the girls to just get us past the line. Yeah, how satisfying was it to to win in that manner? Um, and, yeah, and we actually did end up getting the player sin bin as well. Rosie got sin bin. That's too, fine. You were so, down to thirteen at one stage. Yeah, 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 we were down to thirteen. So it was uh, it was really hard work all the same, but um. That got us by, but the wind as well in the second half was a big help. Like there was a completely gale force wind up there in Derry. You nearly wouldn't even realise it sitting in the stand. Some of the supporters come out onto the field after and they were like, God, I didn't realise it was so windy out here. But like it was yeah, like it was hard having the two players down, but it would just work for it. Like you just you knew you had to keep going until the end. Like Okay, yeah, obviously a, a story club, but so much county success and provincial and All-Ireland success. Ethan, you're into the last four of the All-Ireland series, so we'll come back to that in a little while. But uh, Sean is uh, with us as well. Um, Sean, you're, you're something of a lucky charm now at this stage for um, Belgium. We had you on uh, recently and now you're back on again to talk about an All-Ireland quarterfinal. How are things? Yeah, good, good. I don't think there's anything lucky about me. I wasn't even there. I think it's all... All to do uh, with the team itself. Uh, from the very start, from the very start of the year, they've been they've had had luck without me being involved whatsoever, and I'm still not involved. And there, yeah, I I think there there's a bit more to look to it, but uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been great yeah. since since uh, since winning the prelim round. Uh, you know, like watching being a mead man, enjoyed the, the mead ladies winning the two two in a row. But this was kind of watching this now was a different story altogether in terms. In terms of nerves and kind of excitement and the joy after winning it uh, as well. So, so far anyway, so good and looking forward then to Sunday as well. Yeah, tell us a little bit about preparations for, for, for Sunday. We've been obviously in touch about getting the live stream organised and getting all of the logistics around that uh, done and dusted. What kind of interest? There seems to be huge interest. I got a piece here in the Irish Times um, this morning, uh, Ulster champions from Castle Blaney may feel they're taking on the United Nations when they face... <laughs> Uh, Crave Rua, uh, Brussels based on Sunday um, in Maastricht. Uh, there's just one passage I want to line out, uh, to read out here. Um, and I know you mentioned on our last call, Sean, the, the vast breadth of, 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 of people that are involved in the squad. They hail from Kilshima, Johannesburg, Newbridge, Andalusia, Ruski, Nantes, Kilishandra, Adelaide, Minut, Copenhagen, Kilrush, Athens, Dungourney, Gothenburg, Lucan, Sao Paulo. Ballina and Maryland, right? So that's a that's a, a fair, a fair um, a spread of obviously geography. Uh, so, some absolutely brilliant stuff in this piece from from Mary Hannigan. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was um, the team's Greek goalkeeper Elena Postanzi. If I think I've, I hope I've pronounced her name right. So. What happened with uh, you might take the story forward about Elena yeah. and this, this mad dash to get our passport sorted, um, Sean, because rather than me reading it out here, so yeah, the, yeah. the, the floor is yours. So, like, so us being Irish, Ireland that isn't part of the Schengen area. So, when you're when you're going from, say, Ireland to anywhere by, by the UK, 
you can travel, you can basically travel without a passport. And in Belgium, we can do it so we can travel to Italy or the Netherlands or Germany or whatever, technically without needing a passport. But obviously because of because of Brexit and so on. So maybe Elena hasn't had the need to have a passport because a lot of the travel that we do is it doesn't require it. You can use your just your normal Belgium ID or whatsoever. So then all of a sudden realizing, oh, I need my passport to get into get into the UK. So she had to book her flights back to Greece. The, the, the embassy wasn't, the Greek embassy in Brussels wasn't taking any appointments until April, I think, I think it was. So she basically had to go back home to Greece to, to go get her passport or to apply on, I think it's a first, first come, first serve in terms of appointments. So her dad had to get into the queue while she was coming in an early flight, I think a 5 or 6 a.m. flight or something like that. So her dad had to get into the queue of the passport office that she joined there, did whatever you have to do with the application and so on, and then come back to Brussels that night. And then a week later, because you need to go and collect it, she had to do the exact same thing again, go back to Greece, collect the passport in the morning time, then the evening time, come back from then Greece, back to Brussels. Oh, that's That's dedication. Yeah, and I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it was very close. It was very tight on time and all this. So, but she made the game. She she was in goals and kept the clean sheet as well. So uh, it was very important that that uh, that she got it done. So there was a, a happy ending to all that mileage. Oh my god, that, that's incredible dedication, Aaron. Hopefully things are, are are a little bit more straightforward when you're heading across <laughs> on the weekend. Uh, you're you're very much looking forward to the trip. I I, I guess, Aaron, it's. Um, uncharted territory in some ways and just a, a really nice opportunity for a little bit of team bonding as well I guess yeah completely um I suppose the whole Ulster thing the way it's went has been unbelievable maybe a bit um it's all been a bit of uncharted territory for us um so to be in All-Ireland now is unreal um I suppose any day you get to play in an All-Ireland quarterfinal is exciting but the extra dimension of going over to London for it um adds an extra bit of excitement and I suppose going over and um, we'll head over tomorrow night we'll be there for the match then on Saturday morning um but I suppose as we keep getting reminded at training it's still just another football match just so happens that we have to get on a plane um uh to go play it so there's loads of excitement in the group and the girls are very excited but um management are trying their best to keep us a keep our feet in the ground and remind us there's still a still a job to be done when we get over there absolutely and Aaron, have you managed to get much homework done on on round towers or is there what kind of footage did you have available if any or what, what kind of homework have you done on them yeah um i suppose a lot of our homework um we have well, it takes a village of us village to get us together so it does so there's um so many people in the background particularly like niall smith he does a lot of our um a lot of our homework so to speak for us um, and we kind of pull together and step through it then um but on myself i just watched the um the old britain final against the edinburgh champion champions um so I'd say most of the girls have watched that at this stage, just kind of, we've had that to look at. Um, and I'm sure, um, as I said, the other guys in the management and backroom team have been able to pull out other bits as well. But yeah, that's probably the main one that um, most of us have seen so far. Uh, opponents not to be underestimated, Erin? No, definitely not. Um, I think from the the footage I've seen, the really um, well set up, I've been really mature. Um, there seems to be a lot of strong players, um, particularly at the spine of the team, um, really comfortable on the ball really um from what I could see um and I actually had a friend playing on who played against them in the all Britain um final and she probably would have said the same that they really comfortable routine and possession not just um not just kicking it away for sake that will really try and um keep the ball and wear you down in defence. So like we're all those things we're gonna have to get to terms with um pretty quickly on Saturday. So um I suppose the things there are things that we've um tried to work on all year, but when you have that extra dimension of being so far away from home and the flight over to London and um a different environment, um things can and things can go wrong. So it's just um flagging them early and being um ready for them come Saturday morning. Okay. Are you coming back Saturday evening then or staying over? We're coming back Saturday evening, yeah. I'd say there was probably a few girls wouldn't mind of staying on maybe for a night, but I'm <laughs> so, sure. um we were well minded to be get on the flight and get home. Hopefully it was a all going well. Hopefully, uh, um, not out in semi final to prepare for. But oh, yeah, you went back to the clubhouse on Saturday night for a little, yeah. little celebration if all, if all yeah. goes to plan. Yeah. Aoife, so, even All Ireland semi final to look forward to now against um, Kilmacall Crokes. Um, it's a home game for you, yeah. So, I'm sure you're you're relishing the, the, the chance to welcome the dubs up to Monaghan. 
Yeah, definitely. Any game you get at home is always going to be a good game. Um, like we'll have the support behind us and all there. So we'll just see how it goes, yeah. Uh, how quickly does attention uh, turn to an All-Ireland semi-final? Aoife, once you obviously, you know, winning an Ulster title is a, a monumental achievement and the manner in which you did it. So have you managed to get the heads back down now and start concentrating on on what lies in store? Yeah, definitely. Um, sure, we obviously celebrated Sunday night and then we were back to training on Tuesday there and just had a wee, nearly a light session just to loosen out the legs after the tough game on Sunday previous. But um, no, all focus is now on Croaks in the next week. So we'll get our work done on them. We have another week to prepare or so. So we'll see how we get on then. Is the carrot of potentially playing in Crow Park a big thing? Has that entered thoughts at all, Aoife, at this stage? Or are you just taking it game by game? Well, we're, we definitely are taking it game by game. But then when it was released, everyone that it was the finals were going to be played in Crow Park, everyone did turn around and be like, oh, God, it, it'd be class to get there to play there. So I suppose that is always going to be in the back of your mind. But we do take one game at a time and we'll see how we get on on Sunday, whenever. And hopefully then we will have Crow Park to look forward to. But shall we see? Yeah, big challenge at Lies in store. They, they'll be two excellent um, senior semi finals at uh, Kilcurn Clonburn against Bally McCarberry in the other one. Um, and Sean, just going back to this piece in, in, in the Irish Times, I hope you don't mind uh, me referencing it uh, again. Uh, manager, a brilliant name, Cosmos Gilmore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh... <laughs> I can't, I can't let, a, let a name like that go, go by without asking uh, a little bit about the background there. Yeah, uh, so Co- Cosmos is, he's actually a very good manager. And so for, for years, a lot of time, like across all of our codes for the hurling camogie, ladies football, men's football, we are manager slash players. So even myself, I'm the, the hurling manager, but I'm also a player. And if Cosmos, I think just after COVID messaged the Facebook page and was like, I'm in Brussels here. Uh, I've kind of got a small bit of experience I'd like to take on a team or with football rather the men's or the ladies and the ladies were straight straight on to it to be like yeah we'll take him on and kind of afterwards then with a bit of research uh yeah he's a, he's a long a longford man i don't know if the, the name his name is a long is a i know longford can have a few unusual things in the county but uh, i don't know about the name but he was he's part of the background he was part of the backroom team for I believe the Galway Miners and he was also in the Galway under 20s for the for the men's football who won in all Ireland in 2020. I think it, sure. it is uh so like for uh, us for our club to have someone like with with even that bit of experience to kind of be a bit of a drill sergeant and, and especially with the ladies team you see like you see exactly where they are now and I think I think all of them do owe that to to Cosmos as well because when he comes into training uh, they're kind of ready to go and even even my, my girlfriend is like oh I have to make sure I'm get to training tonight and do good for 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 Cosmos like so he works too uh, hard they, does he Sean yeah I, I think so he's he's like they can't speak highly enough about him to be honest I'm, I'm always here from everyone on how good of a manager he is and and how well he has everyone kind of working together and especially the intensity he brings in training it's, it's vital and Aaron I suppose look at in terms of where you are now and maybe obviously having to unfortunately step back from the playing side of things does it give you a little bit more appreciation of the the effort and the 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 logistics and everything that goes in with with the management team are you kind of looking and studying that a little bit more now that you have the time to do that yeah um I suppose when I got injured the whole group were really good in um probably giving me a new way to be involved and that's definitely one of them um exactly, yeah Probably at the start, I was um, maybe standing on the sideline and we were doing drills and training and I was like, come on girls, why can't you just keep going? It's um, a lot easier when, I, when you're on the sideline, I really noticed that um, now. But yeah, the amount of work that goes into when you're playing, it seems so simple that you just have to, everyone just turns up and we you start training and you start playing football. But my God, whenever you aren't um, playing and have to take a step back and see what goes on behind the scenes, it's... Um, scary the amount of work that goes on and I probably had no appreciation of the amount of actual work that had to go in um whenever I was on the pitch and playing but my own say it is definitely eye opening. Yeah and it's it's gone to a new level. Look Amory, I suppose Aoife has that experience, Amory Burns of you know she's been there and done that and ha- how important is it to have somebody like that and uh, at the helm of a team that 
has has that experience and has gone to the well and knows exactly what it takes to win big prizes. Yeah, it is great to have an Amory. Even like we have a few new faces in this year, so like Neve Lynch has come in to give us a hand. Callum McCard is there too, so it's also good having them new faces in as well. But Amory is always there pushing us on. She's full of encouragement, <laughs> which she'd like to think she is. So sometimes she does. <laughs> she's too fond of the giving out, but um, no, it it is good having her there. And even Francie there, he's he's quiet at times, but when he needs to, when he needs to let her roar, he does. He's an absolute legend, isn't he? He's been like. You talk about seeing it all and doing it all. I mean, he's he ticks the boxes there, doesn't he? Yeah, he definitely does. No, he's he's brilliant. So he is, and he just knows exactly what everyone has to do and where to put them and all the crack. But yeah, no, it, it is great having that experience behind you on the line as well as on the pitch. So you have a little bit of time um, before uh, the game against Chemical Cross, which is half one Sunday, twenty seventh of November. Aoife, so we might try to catch up with somebody in the club again next week. Uh, they might all be gone to ground by then, but we'll try. We'll try our best. Um, and coming up this weekend, Saturday, 19 November, uh, is the current account of the All-Ireland Intermediate Club Championship Court. The final round towers of London against Derry Donnelly, half 12, McGovern Park and Ricelip in London. You can watch that game live, so go to our website for details of how to live stream. And similarly with Sunday, Current account that I'll Ireland Junior Club Championship quarterfinal, Crave Rua from Belgium in Europe against Castle Blaney Falls from Monaghan. 11 a.m. Central European time, 10 a.m. GMT or Ireland time, as we probably prefer to call it. And that's in Maastricht. Um, you can also watch that game live. So again, go to uh, ladiesgaelic.ie for full details of our live stream. So folks, really appreciate your time today. Uh, massively enjoyed the chat. Aoife Burns from Dunamoyne. Uh, Sean Ryan, Belgium, a PRO, and of course, Aaron Flanagan from Derry Gonley in Fermanagh. Thank you so much for your time, folks. Cheers, Jackie. Thanks, Jackie.